And welcome back, everybody. We're talking to San Diego CEOs and business leaders. And today we've got a super guest. We've got retired Navy SEAL and now founder of San Diego-based ComSafe AI, Ty Smith is here. Hey, Ty. Good morning, Bob. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, uh, I really I really appreciate you, you being on here. And uh, this is going to be a great talk. I want to hear all about ComSafe AI. But first, got to talk a little bit about the Navy SEAL <laughs> background. And, uh, you know, I guess my first question is, you know, as you're growing up in Illinois, uh, what made you decide I'm going to be a, a Navy SEAL? The old movie with Charlie Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally it. I'm, really? I'm not making that up. But yeah, I, I was 12 years old uh, and, and I saw that movie and I just totally fell in love. And fortunately, it was a dream that I put in my back pocket and held on to until I graduated high school uh, about six years after that. That's amazing. <laughs> so um, you always knew you wanted to be a Navy SEAL. Then you actually went and went and did it. Tell me a little bit about that experience. Sure. So I, I joined the Navy right out of high school, ended up spending the first four and a half years of my naval career in Sardinia, Italy as a military police officer and uh, an Italian translator. And that was just amazing. It, it was a dream. And then September 11, 2001 happened. And, you know, long story short, my application for SEAL training was approved. I checked into training in Coronado, here where I live to this day, uh, in February of 2002. And, you know, fortunately, successfully navigated the, the training pipeline. And by 2004, I was in Afghanistan for the very first time as a brand new SEAL operator. And so it was sort of, you know, for me at that time, it was sort of the beginning of the rest of my life because I was, I was literally given the opportunity to live my dream. And it was a dream. My, my career in the SEAL teams was exactly that. It was a dream. You know, we had good times and bad times, just like anywhere else. Uh, and some of those bad times, a lot of times came in the form of, of loss, losing friends and, and comrades. But make no mistake, the good times far outweigh the bad. And I, I'm just so grateful for the career that I spent in the Navy. Well, you know, it, it's not often that, you know, you, really you can execute on that dream. And when it happens like this, when you look back at it, was it what you thought it would be? It was more than I thought it would be. And I really love the way you put it, because at this point, you know, I've been retired since 2016, and it's taken me going through this transition mentally, emotionally, and even physically in some ways, this transition into being a civilian again, or as close to a normal being, normal human being as I can be. It's taken me going through this in order to be able to look back on it and go, wow, what a special time that was. So I, I think it was more than, than I had dreamed it would be. Now, um, so 2015, 2016, you, you retire and you start getting into the business of being an, an entrepreneur, uh, which is another big step. Your life is full of these big moments. Uh, how did, how does that come about? Yeah. So I was in grad school up at USC. I was completing uh, my MBA or MBV, the Master Business for Veterans, the, the Veteran MBA program that's amazing, that's up at Marshall Business School. And I was actually gonna leave the SEAL teams and go over to the FBI. I was really looking forward to that. Um, I was near the end of the hiring pipeline. I, I was really you know, proud to follow my, my mom, who's a retired law enforcement officer, into law enforcement after a career in the SEAL team. But ultimately I turned that down and decided to build the predecessor of ComSafe AI, which was Vigilance Risk Solutions, a tech-enabled security consultancy. And I did that in response to the Inland Regional Center shooting out in San Bernardino in December mm. 2015. Okay. I see. So tell me a little bit then about ComSafe AI and, and what you're doing there. ComSafe AI is a San Diego-based technology company. We're an AI company at our core. And our flagship solution is ComSafe AI and ComSafe AI 
is an AI-driven communication safety analysis software that sends near real-time alerts to HR decision makers, human resources decision makers within large organizations that have more than 500 employees. And it lets them know in near real time when there are instances of toxic communication that are happening over virtual communication services like email and chat. So even if the organization is using Microsoft Teams or Slack in order for employees to communicate with one another, our solution can find instances of sexual harassment, discrimination, bullying, even threats of self-harm, and let the organization know, hey, a human being needs to get involved in this situation and help right now. So it will, your technology will will red flag certain words or a series of, of sentences potentially that will alert the company and say, hey, there may be at least something to look into here. It's not, this doesn't really fit or it seems toxic at this time. Sure, but but the solution is more than that. It's more than rules-based. It, the solution understands nuance and context. It uses a patented and proprietary method of, and I'm trying not to go too deep into this because it covers one of our patents, but you know, a form of distributed learning in order to understand the difference between employees joking around versus no, this is an actual threat. Mm. And do you get any pushback? I mean, you know, these days, really any company, they're monitoring emails anyways. Um, but do you get any pushback from, you know, kind of the whole big brother scenario or anything like that? We've heard a lot about that as a potential perception. You know, there's a lot going on right now outside of our solution with other technologies out there being labeled as software uh, and, and spyware and stuff like that. But CompSafe AI was actually built with that in mind. You know, prior to building the solution, you know, we spoke with a lot of organizational leadership and mid-level employees regarding how do we message this so that employees feel better knowing that their organization is or could potentially be using this type of solution. And what we found is that as long as organizations are upfront with their employees and they tell them the why behind their use of this solution, which is we're not trying to spy on you, we're simply understanding that with the changes to the future of work, risk and threat variables have changed and we're taking a proactive step toward keeping you safe in the workplace, regardless of where that workplace is, whether it be your home or our location off La Jolla Village Drive. So things are changing. And as a result, our technology is changing. Threat variables are changing. And so we just have to continue evolving in a way that it allows us to keep organizations and people safe. You know, you see, you see tech companies out there building AI into cameras so that that AI can pick up on when someone is potentially concealing a weapon this is just another step toward the future of work and how we're going to keep people safe in the future of work. And you mentioned that it all got started, or at least, you know, some of the, some of the start of the program was from San Bernardino and, and the shooting that happened there. Uh, since then, there's been other incidents, of course, that we've all seen. Um, and you've been protecting people your whole life. And thank you for your service, by the way. We thank really you. appreciate that. Um, it, it sounds like, well, it, the, Protecting people is kind of your passion. It's it's your it's in your DNA. It's who I am inherently. I mean, it's I, I truly believe with my entire heart. It's why God put me on this planet, and it's a message that my mom ingrained in me. You know, from a very early age. Like I said, my mom's a retired twenty seven year police officer. So I I remember growing up with her saying to me you protect people that's why god put you on this earth you might not know it yet but you're a protector of people and it took me getting older and looking back and and my mom telling me stories of you know the only time you got kicked out of school when you're young is when you were protecting someone else <laughs> so it's uh yeah it's, it's who i am and i couldn't stop being that person simply because i retired from the seal team so calm safe ai is how i'm going to continue living you know, this legacy of a, a protector of people, even after the Navy. So with these incidents happening in the news and being so public a lot of the times, uh, when you're talking to potential customers and clients, companies, uh, what kind of feedback are you getting or what kind of reaction are you getting when you, when you start to talk about your product? 
Well, I, I think that what we found as of late is, is people are beyond intrigued. People are excited about this solution. People are very impressed that finally there is a proactive solution on the market, you know, because historically we've all simply responded to bad things that have already happened. And so more and more, and we spend a tremendous amount of time talking to current prospective customers, learning from the market. We're finding that more and more people are becoming excited that things are changing and now technology is being brought in place to keep us safe no matter what. So it's been a really cool uh, thing to see across the market over the last year or so. Well, and I know that being an entrepreneur is a lot like a roller coaster ride for almost all the time. Um, how has that gone from being a, a Navy SEAL to an entrepreneur for the past four or five years or so? What's it, what's it like being uh, going through that process? Well, uh, I'll be completely honest with you, Bob. It, it's been hard for me. It's been hard on a few different levels, you know, the first two to three years outside of the SEAL teams and building this company, you know, on the surface, I was great. I was successful. I was running a, a successful startup company, but in my heart, I was in turmoil. I was dealing with that transition in here and up here of, of still not being sure I made the right decision to leave the SEAL teams when I did. Um, and, and having that, that imposter syndrome of like, what are you doing here? You're not a, a CEO, you're a gunfighter, like, like what's yep. going on here. So I was dealing with that internal battle, not to mention six tours in, in the Middle East were beginning to catch up with me. And so I didn't realize that there, there was some stuff that I was going to have to go through and, and ask people to help me get through. Uh, and, and I'm glad that I did because it was the only way I survived it was by asking for help. But even now, you know, almost six years into this, and I'm so excited about where the business is going now. I'm so tremendously excited to the point where it keeps me up most nights. <laughs> Seriously, and and not and I, and I like I'm I'm not complaining about this. It's incredible. I'm I'm excited to the point where I'm up most nights, not with worry, but just like with excitement. I love it. But it's it's still really really difficult because this is a stressful life. They said, you nailed it. It is up and down, up and down, up and down constantly. And this is, this is not for the faint of heart, <laughs> the, the game of entrepreneurship, the journey of entrepreneurship. So it's, uh, it's difficult, it's stressful, but at the same time, I've experienced a tremendous amount of personal and professional growth over the last year, six years, and I just wouldn't trade it. You know, let's touch on that a little bit more, if you don't mind, because I think, you know, one of the things about this podcast that I like is it for it to be helpful when, when people are listening to this. And I think a lot of people go through this. And if you can maybe touch on that dark time or the time when things were really tough and how did you get out of it? Was there anything that someone you talked to potentially or maybe just a mindset change that, that you went through? How did, how did you come out of that time? No, it's a great question. And, and it was both of those things. And it, I didn't realize until I started to see the other side of my transition that it was absolutely a mindset change. But for me, you know, everyone's experience is different. I, I think that a lot of military veterans, especially special operations commandos, we're alike in a lot of ways because we come from this culture that's developed us to be the person that, that we become when we're doing that job but the military doesn't do a really good job of teaching you at the end of that journey that hey now it's time for you to shed that skin you don't need it anymore and move on and try to find ways to be a normal human being again or as close to it as you possibly can and so for me personally i thought that everything was fine all the way up into the moment it was not. And for me, I felt like it was, it was sort of the night that it was not. I just, I woke up the next day and I couldn't even explain what I was feeling. And it just, it was just a cloud that kind of stayed overhead for a very long time. And, and I had to, I had to get to the point where I had to realize that as strong as I am, as a human being, I, that I just wasn't strong enough to, 
to fight that battle on my own. And it was killing me thinking that I could. And so I didn't really start transitioning to the other side of that until I submitted and, 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 you know, kind of just took a knee or sat down and went like, I give up, I submit, I need help. I, I can't do this on my own. And I did that uh, one night in, in the form of jumping in a cab uh, and going down to the Naval Medical Center at Balboa and, and going into the ER and saying, hey, I, I need help like right now. I'm, I'm afraid to go home tonight. And fortunately I did that and I started getting help immediately and I ended up spending the, the last six months of my active duty time on the Navy going through a traumatic brain injury clinic at the Naval Medical Center. You know, they, they found out that I had some rattle battle going on upstairs a pretty good amount uh, and, and spending a lot of time getting help from different professionals uh, regarding post-traumatic stress. But it was once, again, it, it took me taking that first step of going that's it. I submit. I can't do this on my own. I need help in order to start that transition to the other side of that grief, because that's what I consider PTSD. It's, it's a form of grief. It's a form of, of your, your conscience and your subconscious and your heart. It's acknowledging loss. And in this particular case, I think that it was that loss that was catching up with me, the loss of my friends uh, over the years and the loss of something very special inside of myself that I would never get back. And I just didn't realize that the very first time, you know, I was in combat, I lost that part of me forever. And the thing that I've learned to understand and accept about grief is that as human beings, we don't get to decide when we're finished with it. It decides when it's finished with us. And so it wasn't until I actually said, hey, I need help. Will you come and help me? That I started that transition to the other side. And, and now uh, I'm, I'm obviously in a much better place. As a combat veteran, I'm just like everyone else. I have good days and bad days. I, I don't think I'm ever going to be completely healed, but I am in a much better place. And, and it started with me admitting that I couldn't do it on my own. Well, Ty, thank you for sharing that. I think that's so important. And uh, you know, a lot of us can't even imagine the kinds of things that you've been through and that you've seen. Uh, so I, I just really appreciate you sharing that with us. I, to kind of expand on that just a little bit too, now when you ask for help, and now you get into the business world, and it's it's a it's a different ball game, but there's some similarities. Does that help you now that you're in business when you need help? And a hard thing to do is to ask for help because like. Like you, you mentioned earlier, you get that kind of imposter syndrome where you're like, you know, who am I? What am I doing? And sometimes right. it for me, it took a long time for me just to, to be able to say to myself, I got to go find somebody and ask them how they got to this point and do what they did. Yes, it did. So coming out of the SEAL teams, I was leaving this this super aggressive alpha culture that that is the field teams where you know you just you don't show weakness you do not show weakness ever uh, and and i had to learn to let that go i had to learn that that was the weakness that was literally the weakness if if i were as emotionally intelligent during my time in the SEAL teams, as I've grown to be now as a result of all of this emotional struggle that I've overcome, I believe in my heart, I would have been 10 times, not just the leader, but I would have been 10 times the operator tactically uh, because asking for help shouldn't be as hard as it is simply because if you do it right, what's on the other side of, of that ask is nine times out of 10, there's a growth. If you're willing to accept it, it's you getting better every time you ask someone for help. 
And so now in business, that's all, that's literally all I do. You know, it's, it's when you're, you're the CEO of a tech company and like, oh, that guy must be super smart. He must know everything. It's like, I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm surrounded by these brilliant people that I look at like they're, they're the smartest people I've ever met and they know everything. And so whenever I hit a problem, I just go to one of them and go, hey, what do I do? Have you seen this before? Will you help me figure this out? I no longer feel like I have to walk around like pretending like I know everything when I don't know anything. I, I've gotten to the point in 43 years now where the only thing that I know is that I still don't know anything and I just need to keep learning every day. So it, it's absolutely helped me learning to just swallow your pride and ask for help. You know? I love it. That's a huge lesson right there. So thanks so much. So what is next for Calm safe AI. How how many employees do you have now, or people around you, and what are you looking towards for the next year or so? Yeah, fortunately, we are in very exciting times. So there are four of us full time, uh, and that's myself and, and three engineers, including our key tech philosopher, Dr. Poor Srivastava. But we're act we're actively growing the engineering team, uh, and we have an offshore team, but we're actively growing our team here in the U.S with more full-time senior engineers. And fortunately, uh, we are in the process of closing an oversubscribed uh, bridge funding round. We set out to raise $1 million to help accelerate us through our go-to-market over the next 60 days alongside our technology partner, ServiceNow, uh, who we're very proud to be partnered with. And we ended up uh, hitting about 1.5 million. So we're really excited uh, knowing that we're going into this go-to-market with ServiceNow over the next 60 days with some gas in the tank that will allow us to speed up exactly when we need to and, and bring in more talent exactly when we need to. Uh, we're also really excited about CompSafe AI release 1.2 over the next couple of weeks, which gives our solution the ability to look at an organization's data retroactively now in the event there's something that the company needs to discover that happened in its past. So. Those are the things that, that we are, are looking at as our five meter targets right now. And they're really, really exciting things. Ty, last question, and then I'll let you go. Um, is there anything that you do every day or maybe every week, kind of a habit that's kind of helped you stay focused? And, and um, I, I imagine being a, a retired Navy SEAL, you know, there's a lot of working out was probably one of them and, and staying in shape. But is there something that you do every, every day to, to keep focused? Sure. So, I mean, that, that's one of those things is just making sure that I'm taking care of myself physically, because for me, it, it, it directly connects with, with who I am mentally. If I'm not taking care of myself physically, I think I'll fall apart up here. And so, you know, I spend a lot of time in the ocean. I, I'm an avid surfer, believe it or not. Uh, and I just, for me, there's something about the ocean that's just, it's healing physically and mentally for me. I, I feel like I'm being baptized every time I get in the water. It allows me to, to literally rinse off stress. Um, also, uh, I am, everybody that knows me well knows I'm a Brazilian jiu-jitsu nerd. Uh, it has been one of my passions for a couple of decades now. And so I try to get on the mats at least once or twice a week. Uh, I am a hot yoga fanatic. I believe in it with my whole heart. It's one of those few things I found that actually makes my body and my mind with all the injuries that I've had physically and mentally, it just makes me feel better. And lastly, you know, something that I've found myself doing a lot more over the last several months is, is prayer. And it's not just that I've started the last several months. I'm, I'm always prayerful, but I found myself specifically honing in on humility and just submission and just, you know, I just ask God several times a day, uh, every day to just let his will be done in my life. You know, I, I submit, I understand that I'm not really ordering my own steps here and, and my plan isn't really uh, as important as God's plan. And so I, I've just been finding myself more and more asking God to just let his will be done in my life, whatever that is, and to help me to stay humble, no matter how successful this company becomes, please help me to keep my big heart in humility. Don't ever allow me to get to the point where you have to come in and then humble me. So. 
Well, Ty, thanks so much for, for sharing your journey in the military uh, and now as an entrepreneur. Really appreciate that and uh, continued success with ComSafe AI. We'll all be watching. Uh, and again, thanks for your service. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you.